Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Ashley. It is really good to have you. If you are not new here, thank you so much for coming back. In today's video, I'm going to share with you guys how I teach my kids to read. I have seven children from the ages of eight months all the way up to 13. I have four readers um, and one approaching the age and the desire to read. So I thought I would share with you guys how I do it. Now, I feel like I need to put this out there straight out front. Um, we are an unschooling family. We make use of curriculum as it serves us, and we do not feel any pressure to have our children reading by any particular age. So this is not going to be a how to teach your kids to read in a week or two weeks or a month or whatever. This is the things that we do to encourage our children towards literacy and to encourage a love of reading in them and in turn teaching them how to turn those letters into words, into sounds, into reading. Okay, so I'm going to start with um, actually a couple of things that we don't do. Um, like I said, we don't feel any pressure to teach our children to read by any particular age. There is no biological standard for when a child should be able to read. There's a very wide range of normal. I've heard of children who can read very, very young, three years old, two and a half years old, and children who take much longer, 10, 11. Um, now, once you get to the very late end of the spectrum, you of course are gonna want to consider if there is a learning disability involved that goes beyond just waiting for everything in the brain to connect to be able to read, of course. Um, but in those middle ages, anything that falls in that range is perfectly normal for a child to learn to read at. We do not use preschool curriculums, flashcards. I don't do letter of the week and all the things involved in that. I firmly believe that you can spend a lot of time trying to help a child memorize the letters, um, what they look like, the sounds they make, all of that or you can wait till they're ready and they'll pick it up like that. And it won't really be something that you have to spend hours teaching um, when they're ready to learn it. We also do not make reading a chore. We do not make it something to check off a list. There is no, you must read for X amount of minutes a day. I want my children to love to read. So my aim, my goal is to cultivate that love to not make reading seem like this exercise that you just have to get through to be able to get to the computer or whatever. It has never been a part of any checklist in our home. And so far, four for four, we have children who love to read, read in their downtime, choose reading, and I'm hoping that by doing things the way that we do them, we can continue to raise children who love to read. Okay guys, so here are the do's. The number one thing, the number one thing in this thing, if you do this one thing, your child will have a massive head start in literacy and in learning to love to read and in learning to read. And that is read to them. Read to them every day, read to them picture books, read to them comic books, read to them signs at the store, read cereal boxes, read instructions when you're making mac and cheese, read to your children, use inflection, use funny voices, make it, ex got interrupted there mid train of thought. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh yes, make it exciting, make it fun, make it something your children want to do with you and keep doing it. Even if it seems like they're not paying attention, even when they're little and they're trying to chew on the book and they're not really listening to you and they're rolling on the floor, just keep doing it. Just keep going, keep reading, read to your kids. That's the very best thing you can do to help your children learn to read. They will eventually want to be a part of what you're doing. Some kids love to sit and listen to a story from the time they're very, very young. Some kids love to roll around on the floor and push trains around while they listen, but you are doing your children such a massive favor <laughs> by reading to them. So that's the number one thing, read to your kids. So I have one child who's simply reading to him, that was enough. That was all he needed. Um, and we, of course, we did things like sing the alphabet song and, and name letters on signs as we see them. Like I said, we don't do 
preschool curriculums, we don't do things like that, but we still talk about these things as we go through our day and we talk about the letters that are in their name and we, we sing the ABC song and we talk about the sounds that the letters make, but it all just comes as a part of our daily life and going through and doing the things that we do. And so I have a child who taught himself to read at about four and a half. One day he just picked up his Curious George book that I usually read to him and he read it to me. Now some of our kids we've needed to put a little bit more um, teaching into teaching them to read. So there's a couple of online programs that I've used that we have found a lot of success with. And we did not use these starting at very young ages, preschool ages, not even kindergarten ages, more like around six, um, maybe even seven, when our children showed interest in learning to read. And those two are reading eggs online. My kids love that, it's fun. They don't even necessarily realize that they're learning. Um, that was one that we used for one of our kids. The program that we used for two of our children that was very successful are two that were, I don't wanna use the word slow because they learn to read just on time for themselves, but um, they were right more in the middle-ish end of average for learning to read, and that is Explode the Code online. Um, Explode the Code, you may have heard of the workbooks, maybe you've even heard of the online program, but it's really fantastic. It moves at your child's pace, so it won't move them ahead in the program until they have kind of mastered where they're at, and then it continues to circle back around um, and repeat concepts and, and as they pull in new ones. So we were really pleased with that. Neither of the children who used that program used the full year subscription to it. It was really just a matter of months before it clicked. And then you'll find once it clicks with your child, um, they're ready to just kind of take off. So that is one area where we have used a curriculum um, to help our children learn to read. And one other thing that we do that kind of makes me laugh because I just, in the last year or two, saw somebody like an academic put out an article about doing this thing. And I've been doing this thing since my youngest was a baby. I've actually been doing this thing since I was in my early 20s. <laughs> and that is when you allow your children to watch television, turn on the subtitles or the captions. I started watching TV with captions uh, in my early 20s when I lived with roommates. I can't even remember why we did it. Maybe it was because we couldn't stop talking long enough to actually listen to the show, so we would try to keep up watching it. I'm not sh I'm not really sure, but I got into the habit of watching television with captions, and then as I had kids, and I realized my oldest son was recognizing words, like if we were out and about, he would recognize a word that he had heard and seen on the TV <laughs> with the captions, when we were out and about. And that's a great tool if you're gonna let your kids watch TV anyway, you might as well use that as a learning opportunity and they begin to associate the sound of the word with the words on the screen. I went to high school with a, with a girl who moved to the States from somewhere in South America and she was a non-English speaker when she moved here. She spent the entire summer watching soap operas with subtitles and captions and over the summer learned to speak English by using captions on the television. Um, so I just thought that that was a really great tool. And then like I said, a couple of years ago, I saw an academic article about using the captions, the subtitles on the TV when your kids are watching TV shows to encourage literacy. So that was really validating for me. <laughs> So then once their reading skills kind of begin to pick up, I don't at first put any requirements on what it is that my children are reading. Comic books, leveled readers, books about dragons or princesses or horses or cats or knights or it doesn't matter what the content is. I mean, as long as it's appropriate. Um, we do have some standards for content, but not necessarily like what some people might consider fluff or drivel. I don't care. I don't care. When my children are young, all I care about is, like I said, that they learn to love to read. There is a time to learn that reading is just a useful tool, 
even when the subject matter is boring as heck and you would rather be doing something else, but you realize that you need to use this tool to learn something you need to learn or complete a project or whatever. When they're starting out reading and in those first few years, truly, all I care about is that my children learn to love reading. Once your child learns to read, the world is opened up to them. Um, and so I'm incredibly grateful that we are able to take this very relaxed, organic approach to learning to read, that we are able to allow our children to learn to read on their own timetable and not a forced timetable. Um, I know that not everyone, not every child, not every family, that's not going to work for them, but it has worked beautifully for us so far. And so really, how I teach my kids to read is a bit of a misnomer. It's not really accurate. It's more like how I encourage my children to desire to read and to acquire that skill for themselves. I think that's really valuable when our kids can take ownership over their learning. We provide the tools, we do what we can to encourage it and to support it, but they take ownership of the process. And, and I now have four kids who are readers. Like I said, my next child in line for, you know, kind of learning to read is Jasper. He just turned five in the spring. Eh, he's not really interested right now. And I'm not really in a hurry. When he's ready, he'll be ready. And I will give him all the tools he needs. I will continue to read to him and encourage him towards that um, literacy and that love of reading. But there's no timetable. He'll get there when he's ready to. I'm fully confident in that. I also just kind of want to note here that um, I know that there's a lot of push to get kids to read earlier and earlier. Um, I see that a lot. Like, you can teach your baby to read. You can teach your, you know, preschooler to read in X amount of time. And while that's not necessarily wrong, there's not necessarily anything wrong with it, I, think, I guess this is more encouragement for the families, for the moms, for the parents whose children are a little bit older when they learn to read, whose brains just aren't ready to learn to read when they're five. By the time your child is 13, 14 years old, they will be on level with their peers. Children who learn to read later catch up faster. And when your child goes to college or fills out a job application, there is no question on there that says, at what age did you learn to read? because it doesn't matter. What matters is that your child learns the skill, develops the skill, and hopefully develops a love for this amazing tool that just opens up the world for them. So if your child is on the late end of the spectrum, don't let that fill you with fear or dread about their future because just about all the evidence points to the fact that early readers, late readers, all end up at just about the same place in the middle school range. So continue to support that love of learning. Keep reading to your kids. Read to your kids, read to your kids every day, read to them all the time. It is so, so, so valuable and its value cannot be overstated. All right guys, that is it for today's video. Hopefully you found this video helpful or encouraging in some way. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me. I know how valuable your time is and I appreciate you being here. I will see you guys very soon.